Welcome to the course Advances in Omics. I am Nagarjun Vijay. I am employed at the Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research, Bhopal. I do some research on computational aspects of genomics with a lot of evolutionary focus. But in this course, we are going to cover various aspects and I am going to take you on a journey that covers various aspects of genomics. Initially, we are going to start off with some early years that is we will start with Gregor Mendel, his principles of genetics, then we will go into human genome project, how it began, how it evolved into this huge consortium of countries working together to solve this puzzle and then how this gave rise to an increasing amount of uh, DNA sequencing and this exponential growth in the amount of DNA sequencing and ushered in the era of next gen sequencing with the advent of all these new sequencing platforms that have become commonplace today. Then finally, we are going to explain how in these two decades since the completion of the initial draft of the human genome, all these advances have made it possible to get a genome that is complete. Right? When we think of the human genome now, it is complete in the sense there are no gaps, there are no missing sequences, there are no errors, all of these things have been fixed. Then we will go on further and get into some of the details of next gen sequencing. When I mean details of next gen sequencing, we will look at pyro sequencing, what is the sequencing chemistry involved and how this has changed in the subsequent sequencing platforms that have come into existence. For example, how Illumina sequencing came together, how the chemistry of this was figured out. Then we will look at pH sequencing or ion torrent and see how the uh, sequencing chemistry of pH sequencing is somewhat similar to what is used in 454, but a different aspect of the sequencing chemistry is capitalized. Then we will look at the pollinator, which is an open source sequencing platform and how this gave rise to all these newer sequencing by ligation methods that, that later on came, came about thanks to the sequencing chemistry that was developed for the pollinator. Then we will see how the panda genome was sequenced in China and why this is very important. By sequencing of the panda genome, actually changed our uh, understanding of what can be sequenced with short read sequencing platforms and now it is routinely possible to sequence large eukaryotic genomes using these short read uh, sequencing platforms as well. Then we will look at some things like the sequencing hall that is there in Hong Kong where there is these rows of sequencers that are kept together which are being used to sequence large numbers of genomes. Then we will see how the long read sequencing platforms have become commonplace these days and also some of the recent short read sequencing platforms that have come into existence. For example, BGIC which has been developed at BGI or AVT which is a much more recent sequencing platform for short read sequencing. We will also see how the flow cell is organized in some of these sequencing machines and how the flow cell is imaged, how is it captured how this is converted into sequencing reads. We will also look at the PacBio Onso which is a short read sequencing platform with very high accuracy that is very low error rates. We will see some of the newer entrants like Ultima Genomics, Singular Genomics and how these things have changed the short read sequencing platform as well. We will also of course look at some of the long read sequencing platforms like PacBio and Nanopore and how these are important for getting better and better quality genome assemblies. Later on, we will look at evolutionary biology and genomics and what is the relationship between these two and how they have enriched each other. We will of course start with Charles Darwin and how his theory of evolution came into being and how this has changed with the advent of sequencing platforms. For example, we are now able to sequence ancient genomes uh, of long dead uh, species or even close relatives or even ancient humans. We will we'll see some examples in the sense we will look at the work of Sante Pabo, the recent Nobel laureate who managed to sequence the Neanderthal and Denisovan genomes and he was also able to reconstruct how these look like and how they have contributed to what makes us human today. We will then move on to whole genome duplication and discuss some of the hypotheses associated with whole genome sequencing. For example, the one proposed by Ono and how he speculated early on that there, there were multiple rounds of whole genome duplication by just looking at the Hox genes. We will also look at the work of Linsky and the experiments that he did to understand and study evolution at experimental time scales and we will see how this understanding changed with the advent of sequencing and we could see the changes in the genome that occur when the experimental evolution happens. Subsequently, we will look at how we make sense of all these genomic sequences that are being assembled through various assays be it transcriptomics, proteomics, metabolomics, all of these different assays. So, we will look at things like single cell transcriptomics, 
detection of RNA methylation at the same time the sequencing is being done. We will see how you can identify proteins by running gels, uh, separating out the proteins, doing uh, high, high throughput proteomics, looking at differential abundance of proteins. Then we will have a tutorial where you will have some hands on exercise and you will get introduced to Linux with a focus on use for omics. So, in this we will look at some of the command line interfaces, we will look at Galaxy which is a GUI based interface for doing this. We will also look at some of the genome browsers and how they are used to look at all these kind of omics data. And finally, we will also go into various mega omics projects where we will see what are the different mega omics projects that are happening. For example, we will look at the genotype a tissue expression atlas which is being used to understand how gene expression is changed by some genetic variation. We will look at the ENCODE project which is building a list of all functional parts in the genome. We will see how the genomes of large number of species whether it be birds or some vertebrates are being sequenced through these large consortia which have come up with very standardized pipelines for doing this kind of sequencing. And in the very end, we will see how we have entered the post omics era for most species and we will look at some of the work that is being done in my lab. We sequenced the genome of the Mesua feria plant recently or the Parijata plant or the wild jack or Artocarpus uh, species and how these are relevant in the post omics era. We will also see how differential expression is quantified in the transcriptome, we will have a tutorial on this and then we will also look at some examples of identifying gene loss in birds using large omic data sets and how this has helped us understand how the phenotypes are changing in these species. Right. So, apart from all this we will have an exam in the last week and that, that will be the end of the course. Uh, I hope you enjoy going through all these diverse content that is there and learn many of these things which I hope will be useful for you. Thank you.